Okay, and so we're going to talk a bit about recording your PowerPoint. Um, so if I look away, it's because my PowerPoint is actually on another screen, and I'm going to have uh, I've got a couple. Of, I'm using a couple of different screens. Um, so um, as I said, this we're going to be talking about that process. Um, so we'll go ahead and get started. Um, okay. So um, getting started, the, the first thing we talk, we'll do is just talk a little bit about what we're going to be covering today. Um, the process of getting started on this. Um, and then we're gonna, I'm going to touch base on something we call storyboarding. And the, the, the neat thing about storyboarding is it's just a helpful way to plan uh, that's great, not only for just doing presentations, but it's also going to be really helpful uh, as you go through the process of getting started to record. Um, and then I'll talk about the, the process of recording and saving uh, your PowerPoint, uh, both recording it and then uh, the saving process. Um, also want to talk a little bit about some best practices and, and um, Dr. Hall was, was kind enough to send me a couple of presentations with narration on them that you can kind of see um, how that process works and, uh, and also point out some best practices of a couple of things that they did on those uh, presentations that I thought were really good and uh, helped in the student engagement uh, in that presentation. Um, I've also got um, some links in here to accessibility and um, I'll touch a little bit about that because actually um, when you save your presentation uh, and you upload it to Microsoft Stream, you'll have that ability to be able to uh, have a transcript of the presentation as well. All right, so let's get started. Um, so a couple of, a couple of caveats with, uh, with the PowerPoint. Um, one is that um, one is that the recording option is only available in the desktop version of PowerPoint. Um, there is an online version of PowerPoint, but it doesn't have a lot of features. Or, uh, so if you say have a presentation that you want to record and you've stored it on the cloud, you want to download that and edit it in, um, the, uh, in PowerPoint uh, on your desktop version of PowerPoint. And then when you edit it in that, you'll have the recording options so that you can uh, record the presentation. Um, if you were to rearrange slides uh, on a recorded PowerPoint, um, let's say that at the end of the presentation, you looked at it and thought, you know, this would look a little bit better if I moved this image a couple of slides down and maybe this graph a couple of slides forward. Um, that's not going to be a problem because each slide is recorded individually. Even though you're continually recording, each slide is a separate recording. And so that recording stays with the recording so that as you rearrange slides, you don't have to re-record anything because uh, that recording is going to be with that slide due to, uh, as, you, as you continue forward. Um, and when you edit, if you made any edits to your presentations, uh, let's say verbiage uh, or made some changes to a graph and had to reflect that in the presentation, you only need to record the one slide that you did um, to record that. Um, and that would be the only thing that you would have to re-record. Um, the rest of the presentation is gonna be fine. Um, I also recommend if you're using, uh, if you're using a uh, external uh, resource, use an external webcam. Um, I have one that I built that I put onto my cam onto my computer and microphone. I'm actually uh, using, uh, um, so I can hear people's questions. I'm actually using the microphone that's built into the, uh, into the camera. Uh, and all I did is it's a, these cameras, I think are around 50 bucks at Best Buy, the headsets are about, you know, the cheaper ones are 30 bucks and they do a great job also at Best Buy. 
Um, so again, why don't you use an external uh, webcam or microphone? The built-in ones on your uh, on your um, say a laptop don't generally work as well. Um, now, in order to record, you actually have to um, make a couple of quick adjustments to your uh, to PowerPoint. And basically, to do that, I'm going to change out my screen here. To do that, um, what you'll need to do is is make a change in. Uh, and add a different, uh, add a recording tab to the ribbon. So to do that, um, all you need to do is click on your file tab like I'm going to. By the way, if you have PowerPoint open at this time, feel free to uh, follow along. I'll give you a second if you don't have it open, just to kind of show that off. So I'm in, I hit file and this brings me to my backstage area. And then I am going to look for options. And options are way down here at the bottom. Terry, for some reason, we're get, um, on the screen, we're only seeing like the bottom two thirds of your PowerPoint. It, oh, there, it fixed it, whatever you did. Almost. Uh, it, it it looks like we're not seeing everything. It, um, there, it's like the TV's waving a little bit at the top. Not sure what's causing that. I have no idea. Um, can you see the? Uh, can you see my screen now? And is it just shaky or? It's blinking at the top. Is a bunch of like. I keep getting a message that the internet is unstable. Uh, it could be, it could be that uh, my signal is a little unstable. Um, my, unfortunately, that, uh, uh, there's nothing really I can do about it. It looks okay to me, but um, my router is over there. Um, is it improving now? Not a whole lot. Now it is. A little. Okay. No, then it went back. It went back. The best thing to do in these situations, like always, is to close it and open it again. Yeah, I hate to do that, but let me let me go ahead and restart this presentation. Hold on just a second. That's the uh, computer technicians 101. Uh, <laughs> when in doubt, restart. Yeah. That's better. Okay, how does that, is that better? Yes. Okay, terrific. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is that this is an easy, very easy process. I just click file and scroll down here to options. And what I'm going to do is we have all these tabs up here at the top of our PowerPoint presentation. Um, these Terry, allow us Terry, we're only seeing your uh, uh, your file folder and the PowerPoint okay. behind it. We're not uh, seeing anything else. Okay, hold on just a second. Let's hold the screen two. Why aren't you sharing screen two? Or oh, oh, that's why. Okay, can you see it now? Yes, that, that's yeah, perfect. Yes, okay. yes. All right, thank you. Um, so as I said, the, um, the presentation itself, uh, the, 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 present, uh, the PowerPoint presentation tool itself has a number of different uh, tabs up here. And what we're just gonna do is, um, I'm gonna go into these options and I am going to uh, 
add that tab for recording. So I just click customize ribbon and it gives me a, a bunch of checkbox, a bunch of different ribbons to access. And then I'll just uh, check the one here that says recording and okay. And what that does is it pops in a recording tab uh, at the, at, on, this, uh, on this ribbon. I can actually take, by the way, if you, ever, if you ever don't like it where it ends up, you can actually move this thing. Um, when I click on it, then here it gives me all of my recording options. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay, let's talk a little bit. I want to give a quick rundown on storyboarding. So storyboarding basically is, it basically takes all the things that you're going to be doing, all your instructional content, and organizes it. Um, you'll have, say, your written narrative, uh, any content interaction you're going to have with your uh, narrative components, such as an animation, a video, um, and uh, or anything that you might want to highlight using the highlighter tool uh, that's built into the, rec the recording tool and then any, uh, any editing notes that you have. Um, and basically one of the nice things is that, that once you've determined your topic uh, in this storyboarding process, you've already chosen the format of your final product being PowerPoint and you've already created the narrative script, the narrative script is your presentation itself. And then the, basically you just wanna think about where you're gonna have interactivity. Um, there is one of the tools that comes with the PowerPoint uh, recording tool is that you can say, uh, use a highlighter and highlight certain pieces that are within your presentation. Um, and then once you have all of those different pieces in, then you can go ahead and take that and rehearse it one or two times before you, um, before you make your final recording. Um, when you do a recording in that uh, process as well is, you always wanna uh, do a record and then make sure that the recording is good. Okay, um, so to starting your recording is fairly simple. Um, Come back to so to start the recording process, um, I'm just going to come here to my recording tab, and I have a couple of options that I can use. Um, and your, now, screen is, your screen is blinking again. Okay, well, I'm not sure what to do about that. Um, is it, um, tell you what, let's see if this helps. And I'll just use, I wonder if it's just not very li much liking the screen that I've chosen. Uh, are, am I still getting blinking on here? No. Okay, so, and you're seeing the slide that says storyboarding defined. So to make a recording, now this is interesting because I am in Zoom. You'll notice that in my image, in my example, uh, it says record slideshow, record from current slide or record from beginning. Unfortunately, in, um, in my, uh, um, on my desktop version of PowerPoint that I'm using, it actually won't let me do that because I'm in Zoom right now and my recording capability is being used by Zoom, so I can't use that here. So just so you know, if you click record slideshow, you will get this image right here uh, that says record from the current slide. Um, when you start the, when you click the recording option, you get this window. Um, the first one here is the record button. Uh, you click record, it'll give you a three second countdown to start. If you want to stop, you just click stop. If 
you want to play it back and just check to make sure that it's a good recording or it's everything is working correctly, uh, click playback. I recommend doing that on the first slide um, before you do anything um, with your presentation. Record the first slide, even just the title slide, uh, and maybe make a couple of statements afterwards. And the reason you want to do that is so that you can make sure that uh, that your microphone is set to the proper microphone and it's recording properly. The last thing you want to do is go through a 25 slide presentation and then have to do it all over again. There's a section here where you create notes. Uh, here is where, is, for example, if you do the test and something's not working, you can check your settings and make sure the proper microphone is selected. Each of these arrows on either side of the slide will allow you to advance from one slide to the next if you want. Uh, there's also a timer and a counter. This will show you exactly how much time you were recording um, on each slide. And so, as I said, uh, the uh, slide presentation itself is uh, individualized. And so, um, as each slide records, and it's going to put a timestamp on each slide for how long it is. One of my favorite features here is the a pen highlighter. Um, now, what happens with this is you have a pen or you have a highlighter. I prefer to use the highlighter because it uh, is a little thicker and it seems to be easier to control. It doesn't, you don't get a lot of waviness in it when you use when you're using the mouse. And I like to use it with red or with one of the brighter colors and then highlighting things. So if there's a key point that I want to make, I can choose that highlighter and then high, you know, and then, oops, and then click and drag across it um, and make it uh, make a point about it. So for example, if I was on um, this slide here and I wanted to make a point about something I could circle it with my highlighter just to let people know that that was maybe something important that they wanted uh, to talk that I thought was important to talk about. And then the last thing is the ability to turn on and off your microphone um, video and preview. And the key, one of the things to this is I am not one of those people who actually likes to, to see myself on camera. Um, it's just, it's enough for me just to, uh, have my have my picture on Zoom, so I really don't want my so personally I don't want to use my picture at the bottom corner of my PowerPoint. So you can turn off that feature so it does not record your image. But if you do have the the, the image recorded, which is right here in this little uh, area here, you can turn that off. If you leave that on, your image your or talking head. Uh, will be down here in the bottom corner during the recording so people can see you when you're recording. So again, um, uh, after you've recorded it, uh, again, play it back to make sure everything works. And you just go to the Clyde Show button, click play from beginning, and then just uh, either, and then if you're testing it, you know, after you've recorded your first slide, you can also play that slide from the beginning and if you're successful, continue recording. You don't have to start all over again because again, each slide is an individual uh, recording. Um, a couple of things, um, deleting timings or narration. So like this feature, so I can go to a slide and if I'm just, if I made too many mistakes on it or I found myself coughing or something went wrong, and I've recorded it over a couple of times, I just want to start all over again, uh, or I, I'm playing through my presentation, I don't like it, I can return to my uh, slide presentation and I can just clear and I can clear the current slide or I can just start all over again and clear the entire presentation. Um, and so that clear, uh, that clear command is really good uh, for you rearranging and changing specific slides or just starting all over again. One button and it's done. Um, now saving, this is a, a key that I really want to point out that is really, that, that's very important. We have three saving options. Save as show, 
export to video and publish to stream. Um, export to video makes a huge, huge, huge file. Um, and it will be very difficult to upload that uh, to Blackboard. It just takes up a ton of room. We don't recommend exporting it. Now, say this show makes a f large file, but it's basically, it's called a PowerPoint show. And the PowerPoint show starts automatically and ends automatically. And it will play through as, uh, as one complete show, much like a video. But the file size is 90% smaller. Uh, so I really, uh, I recommend that if that's something that you wanna do, uh, say that you wanna just upload the presentation to Blackboard. If you wanna record it and keep it um, for an infinite amount of time, um, and um, you also have the option of having it transcripted automatically. So in other words, uh, it will actually have its own transcript of everything that you have said. And um, you have the ability to even, I think somebody asked me about this yesterday. Uh, doc, uh, Dr. Hinoas asked about this. I can even insert a quiz using, um, I can even insert a quiz into this presentation uh, using uh, 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 Microsoft Forms um, because I've done this, and that is to publish it to stream. Um, now, it's very simpler, simple to publish to stream because you literally, um, all you do is click that button. Um, to save a show, a file save as, and then you just choose the PowerPoint show from the drop down list. Uh, and that, that will save your, save your show. As I said, that for format is 90% smaller than an MP4. And all your animations and anything else that you've added to that presentation will be there. What's, what's the, the advantage of, of what's, what was the earlier thing, publish, save to publish? Okay, you've got publish to stream and save a show. Sa okay. Uh, save a show. I just talked about. I'm just about to talk. Publish a stream. That's right. Couldn't you just go to file and say save as? Not to publish the stream. Okay. File save as will get you into saving as a PowerPoint show. On your computer. On your computer. Yes. Right. And, um, and just FYI, I've answered a question about. Take you where? I'm sorry. Publish the stream will take it where. Well, give me give me just a second. I want to, uh, and I'll let you. Okay. I'll, I'll 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 walk through that. Okay. The All other right. thing I want to mention is that um, if you save it as a PowerPoint show and want to upload it to stream, you can't because it's not the proper file format. The proper file format would be an MP4. So publish to stream is just is is a one stop way to do it. Um, basically, it publishes it to your, your stream account in the cloud, um, part of Office 365. I'm going to come back and we're going to walk through that in, in, in a few minutes. Um, um, the other thing is that you can give a nice description of the file. You've got a couple of publishing option, options that you either upload the original PowerPoint to go with it. Uh, you also, by default, you're the only one that can see it. Uh, but if you check this box that says allow everyone in your organization to see the video, then they'll have the ability to see that video. Uh, once you click publish, it takes a few minutes to do so, but basically it just converts that recorded PowerPoint into an MP4 and then publishes up into the cloud uh, to your stream account. Okay, so let me show you how that looks, what that looks like. You know, it may get a little bumpy on here because I'm sharing my first screen. So here's a recorded PowerPoint that I have. Uh, it looks just like any other video that's in my stream account. Um, and basically it's about seven minutes. Um, and so I can click on this and it will play back. Okay. 
Um, and okay, so there is not. Let me see if this one has it. So if I were here, this actually does not have anything recorded on it. Um, that will, but as you can see, the PowerPoint is playing through. If I had, I don't have narration on this one. Uh, if it was narrated, that narrated item would be there. And then right here would be my transcript. Now, the really cool thing here is that I can click add form and I would have to go in beforehand and go to Microsoft Forms, but I could say, uh, create a quiz that says, um, what will be, what are two things we'll be covering in this presentation? And then I can copy and paste the URL to that quiz in Microsoft Forms and um, add that to my timeline and the quiz will pop right up in um, my presentation timeline. So I can actually, as Dr. Hinosi, you're looking for something like that, you can actually embed a quiz in into uh, that recorded PowerPoint or end, in, into any video that you up, upload to Publisher. Um, that process is quite simple, as I said. Um, um, I would just basically go into my apps in Office 365, click on Forms, um, let me see if I've got a, I don't know. No. Um, and then, um, I would just pick a quiz or a form that I had and, um, go ahead and, sh uh, click my share button, copy that URL, come back to my stream account. Okay. Uh, hold on. So basically, when you do that, you're you're adding a link, and the quiz will open up in a different tab. Uh, I'm open. Yeah. The, no, I'm adding a link, and the quiz will open up. Um, oh, well, yeah, it will open up in uh, into uh, this this quiz, but it would be as the student would see it. So it'll look like something like the quiz will open up and it'll look something like that. Yeah. And then I would just answer the question and then go back to my presentation. Okay. videos in here. Uh, but again, uh, that uploads into your, your presentation. And uh, then I can add, I can add things to it. So it's very quick, very easy, um, using the, the um, option to, um, to, to um, save to, uh, to publish to stream is a really quick way to get your uh, your your presentation into into uh, to stream and then uh, uh, easy access to it, and then if you wanted to, um, you know, once you have this in here, um, then you if, if you for example you can very easily share it. Um, in fact, you can share this back into your Blackboard account if you want to. Now, if you say put a quiz into. Um, your, your, your recorded PowerPoint, um, the grading would be you, to retrieve the grades, you'd have to actually go back to the, to the item itself in, um, in stream, in, stream, in uh, forms, uh, so that this is no way uh, integrates with any, any Blackboard piece. It's just that you're able to, the student can pull up and watch that video um, watch that narrated PowerPoint um, through Blackboard by just going to the page, the Blackboard 
page that you have that on. They can open it, they can watch it. Uh, you can input a quiz into it if you want to. And then when they're done, they just go back to Blackboard. Um, and then, as I said, there's a, so you will have, I'm actually gonna share this presentation here. Um, and when I do, you'll also, um, we'll also talk about some of the, uh, these are some of the uh, accessibility articles that we have. Um, um, and these are, um, uh, these are just tools to get your uh, presentation itself um, accessible to people with disabilities. Um, one of the, and honestly, and, and that's a kind of a nice thing to touch base on because today is the 30th anniversary of the American with Disabilities Act. Trivia. <laughs> um, one other thing I wanted to point out is some best practices. Um, when you're making your recording, make a content separate to stop in between each slide because it doesn't record in between slides. Um, when, if you're using, I, I'm one that never use slide transitions, but if you don't, if you do, there are certain ones that you can use, again, because um, they're slower to transition between slides. So things like cut, fade, uh, plush, random bar, shape, more of all, all are the best ones. Um, if you want to record slides with annotations, such as using a highlighter, um, if you want, you can actually make multiple, like you can highlight one, uh, something on one slide, and then the next time that slide appears, you highlight something else without the highlighter on the first item. Um, make Say, for example, you are going to circle four regions of, a, of an image uh, on your uh, PowerPoint, and you can set it up so you circle one image, and then it disappears and circle the next one. And all you need to do is make four copies of that image and then highlight a different part of that image. Um, and then if you don't need all the rest of them, you can just delete the extraneous slides. And as you're going through and processing them, Again, all you have, you'll be narrating each slide individually. Um, and then if you're doing a longer presentations, take frequent breaks. Um, it's, it's a really good idea just so, because you get tired. I know that even when if I've done a 20 minute presentation, um, my, mouth, my mouth gets tired, I get thirsty, I want to take a drink. And uh, so I always want to have a cup of water handy as well. Um, one other thing is that, you know, just get up and, as I said, just go ahead and take a, take a quick break um, with those longer recordings. Um, that's all I have for my presentation, but what I'd like to do is take a minute and share with you um, some uh, recordings that I've got that have been done by your colleagues. Um, so. Let me see if I can find these. Um, so this one, um, I'll go ahead and play. And um, to play these back, by the way, you'll go to your slideshow theme and then just click play from beginning. And hopefully, I'm going to reshare this. And so you can hear the sound. Hello, this is a PowerPoint on creating your resume. Orientation to fashion management for fall of 2020. Welcome to our class where you will learn how to create a resume for applying for jobs while you are now in college. You may currently be where do you start? And 
Um, now, I wanted to point out on that one, first of all, a couple of things I think are really nice about this presentation um, are that she has scripted all of her notes at the bottom in this notes area of your PowerPoint presentation. Mm. And the other thing is her speaking was very measured and very thoughtful in that she took her time to record the slide. Um, I think that really helps uh, kind of with the engagement factor. Um, it's, it may take a longer for the presentation to play, but there's a lot of information that she's going to be giving you. And uh, if, especially if it's something that a presentation where you have a lot of information to divulge, speaking slower helps because I've got to take, hope, I'm, I'm probably or hopefully taking notes. Um, I also liked, one of the things I also liked about this is it's, uh, is the graphics are pretty dramatic, but not overdone. Uh, and it's, so it's a really, um, it's a really nice, uh, a really well done presentation, I think. Um, the other- First of all, it is important to know what you want to apply. Okay. And Here is the resume format that you will follow. Okay. And then the other one I want to, uh, point out is um, here is over here on uh, here as well and um, that by the way the previous presentation was uh, dr. Uh, what was it? dr. Kerry Lopez over in fashion and then this one is um, um, from math science and engineering and I cannot think of uh, the professor's name. Um, Susan, you sent this to me. Can you remember who this was? Yeah, it's Michael Fry. Thank you very much. I want to give credit where credit is due. And so I'm going to go ahead and play a bit of this one. And. So today we will study the use of logical arrays and vectorization in MATLAB. We will find out that logical arrays are a very efficient method in MATLAB to pull out data from a vector or a matrix and is a, a much more efficient tool than other forms of looping structures. So to begin with, what is a logical array? Well, it's very simple. A logical array is just an array of ones and zeros. We call it logical arrays because the ones mean true. So that's uh, his. And um, again, I, I, a great choice, uh, Dr. Hall, because one of the things that's also really neat about this is that basically any equational stuff that he has that is that they're going to be putting into um, uh, into the MATLAB uh, are uh, he's got these color he's got a lot of this stuff kind of color coded so you can uh, it's easy the way you find and again you'll notice he's speaking in very direct and um, uh, uh, speaking slowly so that you can um, uh, follow him along really well. Um, and um, the only difference in, in between those, uh, you'll notice that there was probably an issue of some quality of the microphone. Um, so it de just depends on, uh, that one might have been recorded on a, a microphone that was built into the computer system or something else, I'm not really sure. But um, that, was the, that was one thing I noticed about that. But otherwise they were very well, I thought they were both were very well done. Um, I like the idea of speaking slowly instead of rushing through it so that your students can take notes as they go through. And, um, um, uh, and then just taking the time to record it. <sighs> any questions? Does anybody have any questions for themselves, for, uh, for me? Yes, Terry? Yes, I've, 
I put up a lot of uh, PowerPoints that are narrated, and I use the MP4 format. Now I know it needs to come out of Blackboard. Can I copy that, copy them, and then change them, put them up on the screen, or do I have to do them? Can you can you say that again? The the the, the what was the format before? Okay, it it been put up into Blackboard in the MP4 format. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So can I copy those or how can I take them out of there and put them on the screen? Put them back. Okay. You're breaking up a little bit. That's why I asked. Okay. Oh, I'm so sorry. So the question is from Gail is I've already uploaded my PowerPoints into Blackboard as MP4s. <laughs> um, and then what's, what can I do to fix that so I can take them out of the uh, MP4s out? It's a couple of things that you can do. You should have the original files someplace in your in, in your documentation uh, on your computer. Yes. So what I would do is just directly upload those to uh, upload those into your stream account, and okay. then in stream, and um, I will send you a link. I actually have a tutorial for doing this. You can actually just download the link and put it into Blackboard. Um, uh, okay. So. Yeah, it's a it's a pretty simple process for downloading the link and putting it into Blackboard. Um, okay, it's much like and basically it's it's exact same um, option that you have. Um, we talked about it yesterday. Is you go to Blackboard. Let me go to Blackboard. Uh, see if I and I have to use the URL, right? Do I get yeah, the URL from the screen? The, you actually once you upload it, you go to you go to um, stream, share the URL, and then input the URL, then sh uh, put the URL into Blackboard as a, um, um, as a, uh, as a link. And then the student would just go open Blackboard, click the link and there, okay. and that presentation would open. Okay. I'll find um, them on my computer. <laughs> okay. And the other thing is, the other thing that you can, if you want to, and it's just an, a, a step, an extra, extra step or two, if you have the original presentations and they're not in MP4, but they're in the PowerPoint format, uh -huh. then you can just, uh, then you can just go in and um, uh, uh, publish them to stream. Kind of an interesting thing about pu publishing to stream, since you're logged, since you'll be logged in, mm -hmm. there's no existential thing you have to do it just sends it up to your stream account so there's no you don't have to like worry about any, any being complicated at all it's literally you click publish to stream and there it goes okay it goes to your stream account give me something to do over the weekend <laughs> well you can always come over and mow my lawn <laughs> 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 Terry, do you, since people are going to be pushing their uh, PowerPoints through stream in many cases, can you talk about that issue of um, who can view and who, you know, making the, uh, making the material viewable? I'm sorry, can you, so what, what was the, I'm sorry, I missed the first one. Uh, do you have to talk, do you, is it, do you need to be talking about the issue of making uh, the PowerPoint visible? Who can, who can view it? Don't you have to say that in stream? Uh, yeah, or stream. When do you have to do it and when do you not? That's, um, that's basically when you upload the stream, the, um, you will have to, let me go ahead and go to my stream account here. Hold on just a second. I have way too many things open on my computer right now. So I'm in stream. Okay. And then, um, I have, um, uh, should be, um, let's see. Share your screen. Yes, Della. So this is my stream account and these are all my videos. Um, this yeah. is the... Um, hey, Terry, do you, do you mean to be sharing your screen? Oh, sorry. That would probably help. Okay, there we go. Um, oops, hit that button too quick. Okay, so this is my, so this is one of my, let's say this is one of the, my power, narrated PowerPoint presentation that I sent out to stream. Oh, by the way, in the tutorial, 
uh, will mention this. When I click that edit button, which is the pencil, um, by default, um, I have, uh, by default, this button here, allow everyone in your company to view this video is unchecked. So if you want this video private and only going to people whom you have given uh, a link to or you have shared it with, then leave this box unchecked. Um, if you want to share it with everybody at UIW, just check the box. Uh, that's your big permissions thing. We made that change. Originally, the default was allow everyone was checked off. We changed that permission. So this is default. So all your videos will be private until you share them. Um, and only the people with you, whom you share the link with have access to it. Uh, and then if you want everyone to see it at UIW, you just check the box. Okay, um, thank you, uh, Susan, for that question. Does that, uh, anybody else have any questions? Harry, it's Precious. How are you today? Hi, Precious. Fine, thank you. Good. I'm having a hard time when I have videos uploading it into stream. They're taking forever. They're not uploading like the first two or three times. It takes me like four times to get them to upload. Is that something wrong maybe with my bandwidth or is that stream? <laughs> yeah, I would look, first thing I would look at is how big is that video? Um, is this a one hour Zoom session or is this a, you know two hours? So it that was a 30 a minute library uh, presentation through Zoom. Okay. Um, so that would be the first thing I would check. The other thing I would do would to check bandwidth. Um, one of the things I'm I'm trying to get done, hopefully this this week, about the I'll finally get a, an appointment this week um, with the cable company. Is that I have to have put another drop put in so I can move my desk into another room of the house. So I don't have. You can't see it, but there is a. Off to my left is a, a big cable that goes around the door. <laughs> it looks pretty tacky, so I need to move this. And but when I do that, um, the reason I did that is so this computer is directly plugged in to my router. So it's th my, this computer is not online. This is directly logged up into the uh, into the. Uh, computer. Uh, into and that's what I've hardwired into my uh, router. It is hardwired? Okay, because that was the other thing I thought it was maybe it was a wireless issue. Mary, I had that problem also with uh, Margaret Mitchell, and she just had this tiny little uh, PowerPoint, narrated PowerPoint that she had converted to an MP4, and it did the same thing. It didn't want to upload. Hmm. I don't know. Um, about the only thing I can see is, is maybe check your, with your cable company, see how good your, how fast your cable speed is. Uh, evidently, I'm having some cable speed issues because even though this is hardwired into my computer, I had some, some slowdown today. Well, yeah, probably two o'clock is a high demand time to be on. Well, it just, I just realized something. I don't have to worry about waiting for the cable guy to show up. I'm here. <laughs> Sorry about that. I think. <laughs> when do you want to come? I'm here. Anybody else have a question? I was going to say that I think house burglars are going through hard times right now because everybody's always home. Yeah, and the, the, the problem is they can't collect the 600 a month either. <laughs> Parents, uh, Dr. Feigler. Yes, so um, I may have missed something you said at the very beginning, but I'm more interested in putting in some PowerPoints that I already have mm -hmm. and then talking about them in real time. I'm not, I'm assuming most of this lesson today is for recording for asynchronous. Is that correct? That's correct. And I'm planning to teach synchronously. So um, I'm, is it pretty much the same stuff about putting up a putting a PowerPoint on the screen and then uh, having your little box down in the corner with your face where they can see you talking. Mm -hmm. I mean, now, I'll you talk narrate about a couple it and, of... I'll, and I want to record it. 
for the first time. Okay. So you want to take, you want to record the PowerPoint as part of your Zoom presentation. Is that, am I hearing That's correctly? exactly right. I have these PowerPoints already. Some are years old and some I created this spring since March. And uh, I want to use those frequently. Sometimes I'll just be talking and that's different, but these PowerPoints will be sitting there and I want to put them in and then I want to go through them and narrate them. Okay. And I think you also said that you would like to be, say, while you're speaking, maybe use a whiteboard. Yeah, you can see it okay. right here behind me. There it is. Yeah. Okay. So, um, <clears throat> Um, and have your picture be ha uh, uh, kind of. Um, well, it, I was hoping it'd be half the screen, but it can be down in the corner as a small icon. Yeah. Um, so the students would have to be viewing you in the speaker view. So you have to make, you know, they can't see you. Like right now, if you see everybody on the screen, this is the gallery view. Yeah. But if you go up in the upper right hand corner and click, gal uh, click the word speaker view, it becomes the gallery view. So I only see you. So if I were you student in the gallery view, I could see you and I could see your whiteboard and I can see what you've written on there. Okay. And then, and then the next, the other thing that you would be doing is just going through and changing your screen share. You'd be sharing and unsharing your screen. When you have the PowerPoint on, uh, you can share that screen with a PowerPoint um, when, and, and, and record that. When you have the, um, and when you want to have students see you using the whiteboard, you can do that. Now, another option that you have, in your, and you can't see this because I, I can't share this my screen with this, but I can also go to share screen and there's a whiteboard function. No, in, no, I don't, wanna, I don't wanna do that. Okay, all right. So then, those, are the, those are the two things that you can do that you can integrate as you record your presentation uh, on Zoom, you can uh, switch screens using a share screen. And then the other thing is for your students to get the full effect, they will have to be uh, watching you on um, full screen. Because if they don't, and they're watching you on, and, and, and we've got every screen, you know, we've got what, 20 something people online right now. Um, yeah, too many icons. Yeah, then they'll just see, you know, they'll see 30 icons, 25 icons on their screen. So what about um, um, recording this lesson when I go through it for the first time so that they can go back and look at it later or if they were absent? Um, do I need to set record every single time I present a class or is there a way to default that it'll record every time? No, you have to actually go click record every time. Okay. All right. Good question, Zoe. Thank you. Where's the button for gallery and speaker thing? Uh, upper right corner. <clears throat> if you go to the upper right corner, it's right under uh, on the, you know, you have your screen is all black and then you'll have a big white band at the top. Right. Uh, and there, you've got the minimize, uh, uh, maximize and close and it's right under the minimize button. And it, when you're in, when you're in, Gallery view, the button says speaker view. When you click that, uh, you're now in speaker view, right. uh, which means that you see the person that's speaking. I see. And then you can click on that. It says gallery view, you click on that and it takes you back to the gallery view. Okay, and in Zoom, if you, if you click speaker, then then that's what they will see, right? Uh, if you if if you choose that your students have to choose speaker. Oh, the students have to this choose. This is individualized to each person. Right. In right. The you, you can't set it for them. I guess. I uh -huh. think that's what he was asking. I'm not not sure. I'm just guessing. Yeah, it's the students have to select speaker view. Okay because that's the only way they're going to be able to have a screen big enough to see what he's writing on the whiteboard. Yeah. Um, the other thing uh, that you could do is um, um, share your screen and then just take the camera or not share your screen, but use the, you know, you, you're looking at the camera anyway, the cam you've got the camera with you anyway, is have a more portable camera and point the camera at the, at the whiteboard. 
that's another option that you have. Anybody else with a, a question or an observation? Wow, I, I'm amazed. I actually, 56 minutes I talked. That's impressed you kept me to that little time. Um, I thank you for your time today. Um, it's, it's, even though I'm just seeing the faces instead of, you know, so I've seen some faces, I'm seeing some black and I'm seeing some people um, it with, with great backgrounds. It's really great to see um, our faculty here. So thank you so much for coming. I'm getting that. It is good to see a lot of faces that I don't, that I haven't seen in uh, four months. So um, I'm hoping that you're having a great summer and, are, uh, and if there's anything that you need uh, in helping prepar in your preparations for the fall semester, um, please don't hesitate to call me uh, or Adela. We are here. Um, we are in the process of replacing Caesar, but until then, um, you are more than uh, you are more than welcome to call me. Um, in fact, there's my phone number and my email address, and that phone number rings directly to my cell phone. So um, you're getting me at, you're getting me in my office here at home. So please feel free to, to, don't hesitate to call if there's anything I can do. Uh, even if it is helping you uh, uh, work, work around um, uh, running through some of these scenarios that you wanna do, if you wanna test out uh, some of the ways that you wanna use uh, Zoom uh, asynchronously or synchronously, we're, we're here to help out. Thank you. All right. Well, thanks so much. Have a great Thank afternoon, you. everybody. Thank you, Terry. Thank you.